Okay, so here we are on the second piece of the cardiac cycle. The previous video, we talked about um, the blood flow dynamics, so what causes blood to flow and what prevents it from flowing. Please remember that blood flows from a high pressure towards a lower pressure. Think of it just like diffusion, high to low. And that's gonna be very important for how the blood is gonna move through the heart today. Okay, so let's talk about the, let's do some general anatomy review before we begin, so make sure we're all on the same page. There are four chambers in the heart. We have two atria, the right atrium and the left atrium. Both of those are going to contract simultaneously. Then we have the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Again, they also contract at the same time. So in general, the, the atria are going to receive blood from veins. So veins will go into it, and that's how you get blood back to the heart. And then the ventricles will pump blood out towards the arteries, which will take it away from the heart. So atria receive going into it, and ventricles pump going out. There are two circuits. We have the pulmonary circuit. Pulmonary means lungs, and that is gonna come out of the right ventricle. The right ventricle will pump to the lungs. Then we have the systemic circuit. Systemic means body-wide, and that's gonna come out of the left ventricle. So the left ventricle pumps to the whole body, the systemic circuit, and the right ventricle pumps just to the lungs. That's the pulmonary circuit. There are four valves in the heart. There are, and so the two tricuspid and bicuspid valves, collectively those are called the atrioventricular valves. I usually say AV valves for short, AV valves. Those are gonna be between the atria and the ventricles. And then there are two semilunar valves, and the semilunar valves are named that because of what they look like, and they are going to be between ventricles and arteries. Okay, so I usually abbreviate semilunar valves as SL valves. Let's do the atrioventricular valves first. Let's look at the structure real quick. So here we have these little cusps, those are like little flaps, and the flaps are going to be anchored to the walls of the ventricles using little strings. Those strings are called chordae tendinae. And that those are gonna make sure that the flaps don't flap up into the, into the atria. So again, remember that the AV valves are between the atria and the ventricles. So their job is to make sure that the blood does not return back to the atria. We wanna make sure that the blood is only going in one single direction. They are going to be open when the blood is flowing from the atrium into the ventricle. And remember, the reason that blood flows is because a change, a difference in pressure. That means that the pressure in the atrium is going to be greater than the pressure in the ventricles, and that's going to cause the blood to flow from the atria down into the ventricles. As the blood flows through, the, the AV valves will be open because the pressure is greater is greater in the atria than in the ventricles. Okay, so the pressure in the ventricles is now less than the pressure in the atria. When the ventricle walls begin to contract, as you contract, that means you're taking the volume of blood and you're forcing it into a smaller space. That creates a greater, an increase in pressure. And so as the ventricles contract, that makes it so that the pressure in the ventricles is now going to be greater than the pressure in the atria. And that makes it so that the blood will try to flow towards the lower pressure. And as it flows up, it, it's stopped by the little cusp, the flaps of the AV valves, and it's gonna be anchored down by those chordae tendinae. Okay, so the blood tries to return back Instead, they fill up the little flaps of the AV valves, and that's what closes the AV valve. Okay, so to summarize all that, the AV valves close when the ventricles contract, causing the pressure in the ventricles to be greater than the pressure in the atria. So AV valves are closed when the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the pressure in the atria. Okay. 
Okay, so the important piece to remember is that for the AV valves, you're comparing the pressure in the ventricles to the pressure in the atria. That's important because once you get to semilunar valves, remember that the semilunar valves are the valves between the ventricles and the arteries. Okay, so what you're comparing for those is the pressure in the ventricles to the pressure in the arteries, which are the blood vessels, not the chambers. Okay, so here's how they work. As the ventricles are contracting and the pressure in the ventricle is greater than the pressure in the arteries, that's what causes the blood to go into the arteries. It forces the blood into the arteries. And as it goes, as it goes into the arteries, it's going to be forced through the semilunar valves. And therefore, the semilunar valves are going to be open when the pressure in the ventricles is bigger, greater than the pressure in the arteries. But when the ventricles begin to relax, that makes it so that the pressure in the ventricles is now going to fall below the pressure in the arteries. The blood will try to return back to the lower pressure, but it will be stopped by filling up these little cusps. So if you look at the structure of the semilunar valve, that's where the name comes from, by the way. It's got these little upside down cups Think of it like upside down umbrellas or maybe upside down parachutes. And the blood will fill up those little cusps and that'll force the cusps next to each other, which is what's going to close the semilunar valves. Okay, so the semilunar valves are going to be closed because the ventricles relax, making it so that the pressure in the ventricles is less than the pressure in the arteries. Okay, so the two pieces of information that you need to know for the semilunar valves is the pressure in the ventricles in comparison to the pressure in the arteries. Okay, so let's try to put that all together. So write this down in a way that makes sense to you. For the AV valves between the atria and the ventricles, they are going to be open when the pressure in the ventricles is less then the pressure in the arteries, that causes the blood to go down to the ventricles. And they will be closed when the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the pressure in the arteries. Whereas the semilunar valves, they're gonna be between the ventricles and the arteries. And so they are going to be open when the ventricles are greater than the pressure in the arteries. And they are going to close when the pressure in the ventricles becomes less than the pressure in the arteries. So for AV valves, you compare ventricles and atria, which are the chambers. And for semilunar valves, you're going to compare the ventricles with the arteries, which are the blood vessels. <clears throat> so be very careful. They're very hard. They sound very similar. So let's make sure. Often phrase, uh, work questions are phrased and they use arterial pressure. Arterial pressure refers to the pressure in the atria, which are those chambers, the top chambers. And arterial pressure is the pressure in the arteries and those will be the blood vessels. Okay, so they're very similar to each other. And even I have a hard time sometimes saying the right words. So be very careful with that. Okay, so what I would like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and see if you can answer this question because one of the most challenging things for a physio is finding the right words. So make sure you have the right words here. Okay, so how does the mechanism of the semilunar valves compare to the mechanism of the AV valves? Okay, so your answer should include two pieces, what, whether or not the ventricles are contracting or relaxing and how the pressure changes causes the blood to flow. Okay, so pause, come back. Okay, let's go through it. For the AV valves, the AV valves close because the ventricles are contracting, and as they contract, that increases the pressure in the ventricles. Once the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the pressure in the atria, the chambers, that's what's gonna cause the blood to try to go back to the lower pressure, fills up the little cusps, and that's what closes the AV valves. 
Whereas the semilunar valves, they're gonna close because the ventricles relax. When the ventricles relax, the pressure in the ventricles becomes less than the pressure in the arteries, the blood vessels. The blood will try to return back into the ventricles that fills up those little cusps, and that's what closes the semilunar valves. Okay? Okay, that brings us to heart sounds. So generally when people think of heart, they hear like dub 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 and they tend to think that it's the contractions that cause the sounds, but it's not actually the contractions directly. What it really is, is the closing of the valves. Okay, so if you think about the way that the, the cycle works, you have the, the AV valves closing first, that makes the lub sound, and then followed by the closing of the semilunar valves, that makes the dub sound. So lub is AV valves closing, and dub is the semilunar valves closing. Into the cardiac cycle. Okay, so I'm going to describe the cardiac cycle in two different ways. I'm going to use like a visual way first, where I show you pictures of the, of the chambers, and then I'm going to use a graph to, show, to explain it in, uh, again. Let's look at the two general phases. Okay, so there are four specific phases that you'll need to know, but the two general phases are systole. Systole means the contraction phase. And so both the atria contract together, then both the ventricles contract together. Okay, so if you look at all of that contraction, that would be systole. And then you have the relaxation phase. So the relaxation phase would be like the, the you know, pa pausing, waiting for things, for the ventricles to refill. That's called diastole. Okay, so systole and diastole. Let's look at the four specific phases now. So if I look, ask about phases for the cardiac cycle, I'm looking for one of these specific phases. Let's look at, let's start with ventricular filling. Now, it's exactly what it sounds like, right? The ventricles are filling. But remember that I need you to understand pressure. So the blood flows because of changes in pressure. It, blood will always move from high pressure to low pressure, okay? So if the ventricles are filling up, that means that blood is flowing into it. So the ventricles have to have the lowest pressure, right? So during ventricular filling, the pressure in the ventricles is the lowest pressure of everywhere else. So it's lower than the atria and it's lower than the arteries. So I really like to visualize as blood just flowing to the lowest point. Okay, so blood is flowing to the lowest point. In this case, it will be the ventricles. Now, you also need to know what's happening with the valves in each of those phases. My suggestion for you is to look at them independently using the information that you already know. So for the AV valves, okay? So if the two piece of information that you need to know for AV valves is the pressure in the ventricles and the pressure in the atria, okay? So the ventricle pressure is lower than the pressure in the atria, therefore the AV valves will be open. Okay, so that should make sense to you because how else would the blood get from the atria into the ventricles unless the valve was open? So the AV valve will be open. For the semilunar valve, the two pieces of information you do need to know are the pressure in the ventricles compared to the pressure in the arteries. Now, the, the pressure in the ventricles is less than the pressure in the arteries. That must mean that the, the, the semilunar valves are going to be closed. So the AV valves are open, allowing the blood to go from the atria into the ventricles, but the semilunar valves are closed so that the blood, the blood cannot go into the uh, arteries. Okay, so that's the ventricular filling. Into isovolumetric contraction. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what this name means in a second. At this point, right, we're starting right here. At this point, the ventricles begin to contract. Okay, so they're contracting and they're making the space 
in the ventricles less. And at this point, as they contract, they're increasing the pressure in the ventricles. Now the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the pressure in the, in the atria, but it hasn't makes, made so much of an increase in pressure so that the pressure in the ventricles is still less than the pressure in the arteries. So the ventricle pressure sort of between the two. It's, it's greater than the pressure in the atria, but less than the pressure in the arteries. Okay, so let's look at each piece individually. For the AV valves, if the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the pressure in the arteries, the AV valves are going to be closed. Okay, so the blood tries to go back into the atria, but it's stopped by the cusp, and that's what closes the AV valves. So the AV valves are closed, but the pressure in the ventricles is still less, less than the pressure in the arteries, so the semilunar valves are also closed. If the AV valves are closed and the semilunar valves are closed, is the blood going anywhere? The answer is no, it is not. Okay, so let's look at isovolumetric. Iso means the same, volumetric as in volume, so the same volume, no changes in volume. So as it, the ventricles are contracting, but there's no change in volume. That is the isovolumetric contraction phase. Okay, so anytime you see isovolumetric in the name of the phase, both valves have to be closed because that's the only way you get no change in volume. Move on to phase number three. Okay, so at this point, the ventricles are continuing to contract, right? They're continuing to squeeze that blood. And as they continue to contract, make the chamber smaller, when you decrease the volume, the pressure is going to continue to increase. Okay, so the pressure in the ventricles is now the greatest pressure. It's greater than the, arter than the atria and greater than the arteries. Okay, so if the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the pressure in the arteries, what's happening to the AV valves? They must still be closed. They closed way up here, they are continued to be closed. But now that the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the pressure in the arteries, that's going to allow the blood to flow from the higher pressure to the lower pressure into the arteries, and that will force open the semilunar valves. And again, that should make sense to you because how is the blood going to get into the arteries unless the semilunar valves are open? So this is called ventricular ejection because the blood is being ejected out of the ventricles and into the arteries. Last phase, isovolumetric relaxation. At this point, which starts right here, the ventricles begin to relax. And as they begin to relax, the pressure is going to drop. So the pressure is going to drop. So the pressure in the ventricles will be less than the pressure in the arteries. What event does that cause? When you make it so that the pressure in the ventricles is now less than the pressure in the arteries, the blood will try to go back into the, into the, into the ventricles. It will be stopped by the semilunar valves and that's what closes the semilunar valves. So now the S semilunar valves are closed and the AV valves are also closed. Remember, they closed way up here. The pressure in the ventricles is still greater than the pressure in the atria and therefore the AV valves continue to be closed. So the AV valves are closed, the semilunar valves are closed, there's no blood moving anywhere. Therefore, this is isovolumetric. Okay, so the ventricles are relaxed, but it's no blood moving anywhere yet. Isovolumetric. 
Okay, from there, we would continue into the ventricular filling phase and continue the full cycle. Okay, so that is the entire cardiac cycle. What I wanna do right now is go through it again, but I'm gonna use a different format. So instead of you showing pictures of what's happening with the chambers, I want to look at pressure changes in, on, using a graph. Okay, so let's look at this graph. On the x-axis here, we have time. And then on the y-axis here, we have pressure. So we're looking at the changes in pressure over time. There are three, three lines on this graph. The red line here represents the ventricles. Again, right or left doesn't matter. Represents the ventricles. The blue line here represents the atria. And then the black line here will represent the arteries. The aorta is a big artery in the body. Okay, so we're looking at the relative changes in pressure for those three places. Let's start here at the beginning, because again, even though this is a cycle, this is just where we tend to start, the ventricular filling phase. So if the ventricles are filling, the only way they could be filling is if they are the lowest pressure. So see here this red line? The pressure in the ventricles is the lowest point. Again, everything flows towards downhill. So the blood will be flowing towards the lowest pressure in the ventricles. And the, the AV valves will be open. That's how the blood gets to, through it into the ventricles. But the semilunar valves will be closed because the pressure in the ventricles is less than the pressure in the arteries. So remember AV valves, you compare the ventricle and the atria. For the semilunar valves, you compare the ventricles and the arteries. Okay, now at this point, the ventricles begin to contract. And as they contract, you see a rapid increase in pressure. See that? So you have an increase in pressure, the ventricles are contracting. At this point right here, the pressure in the ventricles is now greater, exceeds the pressure in the arteries. Sorry, say that again. Pressure in the atria. So if the pressure in the atria is now greater than the pressure in the ventricles, what happens at this point? That causes the AV valves to close. Okay, so at, at this point, where the, where the pressure lines cross, so it's that the ventricle pressure is now greater than the atria, atria pressure, the AV valves are going to close. But look, even though the pressure is increasing, it's still less than the pressure in the arteries. So what's happening with the semilunar valves at this point? They are still closed, okay? So at this point, both the AV valves and the semilunar valves are closed. And if they're both closed, nothing's going nowhere. <laughs> nothing's going anywhere. <laughs> Bad grammar. So that would be the isovolumetric contraction. The ventricles are contracting, but the blood is not moving. Okay, now let's bring us to this point right here. At this point right here, the pressure in the ventricles is now the greatest pressure. It is now greater than the pressure in the arteries, and that causes the semilunar valves to open, and as they open, that allows the blood to flow from the ventricles down up into the arteries, okay? So if the blood is going out of the ventricles into the arteries, that is called ventricular ejection. It's ejecting it out into the arteries. At this point, the pressure in the ventricles is now greater than the pressure in the arteries and still greater than the pressure in the atria. Okay, so that means that the AV valves are continuing to be closed as they've closed over here, but the AV valves are now open, allowing the blood to move out into the arteries. Now we have the ventricles beginning to relax. And as they relax, the pressure is going to decline. At this point right here, the pressure in the, eight vent the pressure in the ventricles now becomes less than the pressure 
in the arteries, as it becomes less than the pressure in the arteries, that makes it so that the blood tries to flow back into the ventricles, causing the semilunar valves to close. So at this point where it crosses, that's where the semilunar valves are going to close. What about the AV valves? The AV valves are also still closed because the pressure in the atria continues to still be less than the pressure in the ventricles. So at this point, the, pressure, the AV valves are closed and the semilunar valves are closed. So what phase is this? This is isovolumetric relaxation because the ventricles are relaxing, but the blood is not going anywhere yet. No change in volume. Okay, so as the ventricles continue to relax, at some point it'll, it'll, it'll make it so that the pressure in the ventricles now becomes less than the pressure in the, in the atria. That, that makes it so that the blood now is flowing from the atria down into the ventricles, and so now the AV valves open again. So where would B be here? If the pressure in the ventricles is the lowest one and the blood is going into the ventricles, what phase are we in? This is also the ventricular filling phase. So this ventricular filling phase starts here and then continues on over to here. So remember, this is a circular cycle all the way through. Now, let's briefly go back to this piece that I kind of skipped. This little uptick right here, that's called the dichrotic notch. And basically what this is, is because the semilunar valves are closed, that kind of makes a back, like a backlog where the blood kind of like comes together in that one spot. And that's going to cause that increase in pressure in the arteries here. And that helps maintain the blood flow even when the ventricles are relaxing. I'm not going to ask you about that one. I just want you to know about it. Okay. I know that's a lot. You might need to watch it a couple of times. 